Do you really need this? Hey, it's your favorite Zoomer going against the Boomer Sunday slot cars, and today we're talking about the variable power supply. Now, it's really funny to me because when it comes to Carrera, we're all just fine, you know, just fine. If when, when this car fell off the track a couple times, like literally off the table of the track and hit the ground twice, anybody who races Carrera, not new to the hobby, was, was fine. Nobody cares. If you were to do the hobby part, <gasps> But anybody who knows Carrera products is like, oh, it's going to be fine. You know, we, let's be honest here. We've all abused the control unit as well. We've all shorted it or got the wiring wrong and put that inline fuse to work. And we know it's going to be fine. But for whatever reason, we don't trust the brick. There's this movement online. Oh, apparently I lost the heat to my brick. That you need a variable power supply, that the stock power supply is not gonna be good enough. Now, we've all know I've had a lot of different courses and I raced the different scales. I've raced Digital 132 and 124. I've done so regularly for years. I know what I'm talking about. I think honestly, 90% of you, sorry, even 95% of you are going to never need a variable power supply. Your track, if it's just two lanes, is probably gonna be just fine without one. I've never had a problem. With, power, with a power issue, even with six cars and all the accessories and a ton of lane changers. Never an issue. It's only when I got to 20 feet, four lane, all the fix-ins, max cars, that I needed a little bit more power. I had to turn up the voltage a smidgen. When it was 17 foot, four lane, just fine. No problem. And I didn't even have the support of the check of the uh, start lane extension. I was just using the pit lane with some jumpers. So it had less, the 17 foot had less support on it in terms of power than uh, this 20 did, okay? So trust me, take it from me, if you're using the start lane, I guess what I was trying to get is if you're using the start lane extension with the 17 foot track, you're gonna be fine. Now, here's the thing. Some people like to say, oh, well, it's gonna save you money because instead of having to buy the, because this is uh, 140 Canadian. So instead of paying 140 Canadian for the um, 124 power supply, you could just spend 100 on the variable. Problem with that is you gotta buy more than just the, the variable power supply. You're gonna have to invest in some wire strippers, not very expensive. Some solder, if you wanna build, put an inline fuse in and you're going to need a fuse because even though the control unit itself has a fuse built in, it's not really gonna help too much if too much amp gets drawn. I think the last thing you wanna have happen, because sometimes the uh, variable power supply will spike. It doesn't spike much, but you never know. You might be in a thunderstorm or something, and you turn it on, and it just shoots right up there, and you fried your system. So you're gonna need to put a fuse in. So you gotta build the soldering iron. You know, the soldering iron itself is like $30 already. So we're already at $130. You know, is it really worth it at that point? I want you guys to think about this. People are like, well, it also stops you from having to swap up the power supply. Well, you know, I had to take the plug out and I put another plug in versus I had to bend down to the ground or even I see a lot of the, the current audience has it up high on the table, like built up, sticking up through the table in some layouts just so they can turn the dial without bending over. But no, that's not really worth it. Like. It's the it's really the same amount of effort. You're exerting the same amount of effort. It's really just sometimes people in this community are, are just tinkers. You know, they're older, they have more time on their hands, they like to tinker, and people don't like to question conventional wisdom. I don't like to question conventional wisdom, but I also I'm a man of science and I like to do experiments. And I'm sorry to tell you, I really have not noticed a difference between a variable and a stock, like a regular wall wart, unless you get really big. Unless you have multi-lane track again i'm reiterating this and it's humongous you're not it's not needed just stick it with the with the stock power supplies it's all right you want to make a case for making your own jumper wire fight i'm not going to argue that i'm a brutally honest person personally i just like using carrera's stock because it just is built for the track it's easy to slide in and out and i don't have to buy any wires or ship any wires yes it's expensive that's just my preference now i, I got it you see, I'm being honest, and I'm going to be honest with you again. Carrera clearly meant 
or people to use a variable power supply with the control unit. And to understand why, you just have to compare it to the old black box to the newer control unit, and you can see that the new control unit could take much more voltage and ampage. The reason for that, in my opinion, was because some European clubs have the same thing I did of a four lane uh, track, except theirs is much larger. So because they had a four lane digital track, they, and it was much larger than mine, they needed a lot more power to it. But again, you know, the thing is these cars are very power efficient. You don't really, like, you know, people are like, oh, you gotta think of all the draw. They're not, <laughs> this doesn't draw that much chance. I'm gonna say this right now. If you're just gonna be racing 132 on a two lane track, it would have to be an insanely large track for you to even consider needing a power, a variable power supply. Even at 150 feet with two lanes, I think you're fine. Running, like, I've never, okay, I'm gonna be honest here. I've never run seven. I've never done six human drivers with the ghost car driver because to me, I don't, do, I don't even wanna see another car after six. And now I've done the pace car before and I've never had a problem with the pace car. So I guess, in a way I did, but you know, ghost car's running gauzily. The point is, next video, I'm going to show you step by step and actually show you not just show you like before and after, but like show you the process during on how to splice the wires and how to connect up the variable power supply and everything you're gonna need. And if you're a tankerer, you're probably gonna be like, oh, this is great. You know, I've always wanted to see this. I'm just telling you one last time, do not bother unless you're gonna build a humongous club track. Don't do it, all right? Sunday slot cars, and I don't make hate and click videos. Like, don't think I'm just going against conventional wisdom to tick anybody off or get you guys commenting and stuff. That's not the case. I'm just being honest. And the thing is, I'm not afraid to experiment and see if claims that are just completely taken at face value are true. And this is one of those claims that I don't think is true. So see you guys next time. Happy racing, whatever. Go buy my stuff.